Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. And as you can see, we're back with the N52 engine. And today we're gonna to be replacing the starter motor on my N52. Now, as many of you guys know, this is a common weak point on the N52. And as the mileage gets on, the starter motor has become weaker and weaker, and you're gonna to have to replace it sooner or later. That is the actual truth of having an N52 engine. It has failed on me. I've learned my lesson from it. I'm not going to be taking any more chances with that again while I've got the manifold off. It's something I want to do. I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that. You can see the start motor is located right down there in the middle. To get to it, you do have to take the manifold off. Now, the manifold isn't that hard to remove. Um, if many of you guys have never done it before, you can follow my videos for doing that. We are going to be getting that start motor off today. I do have a brand new Bosch one that we're going to be putting on, and then we can go ahead to start putting all the manifold back on the new CCV and everything else. But the first thing I wanna focus on is getting that starter motor out of here and putting a new one in. So if you look just down here, you can possibly see there is a bolt literally right here that you need to remove. It's located just under this wire right here. That's the first one you have to remove on the starter motor to be able to remove it. The next one is just at the back here of the bell housing. You're gonna to have to take this one out as well. I'll be showing you how to remove that when we get onto it, but there's the other one located right there. So when you see my hands going behind there, you'll know this one right here is the start motor bolt. You can't miss it purely because you can see it aligns holding the start motor. If you look at the start motor correctly, you'll see that that bolt is the one holding in the start motor. And that one's going to be the longest bolt that you're going to remove. So do bear that in mind when you do remove it. Do not take out this other one here. This is for the gearbox that mounts to the actual block itself. So don't take out that one. It's this one you want right here for the start motor. So let's get on to removing it. So as you can see, I am now gonna start removing the bolts. It ain't gonna be as clear as many of you guys like to see, because obviously the camera's on a tripod and I have to go down there. But I've shown you where the bolts are, so you get a drift of exactly what I'm removing. For this, we're gonna need a certain amount of tools, which I'll show you. We're gonna need a long extension, of course, to get in there at first. Um, and then we're gonna need our e-torxes, which is an 11 mil. E torques, which we're going to be using to remove the bolts. For the first one, really, you just want to align it underneath here, and then you're just going to want to crack it loose. I will have to go around the other side to do that. So when you're around here, you just want to do that and just remove it so it breaks the torque of the bolt. Then you can just screw it out, being careful not to lose the actual bolt itself, because it is a short one, this one. So we'll just take it out. And you can see there, that's the first bolt. It's a small one. They weigh next to nothing because they're aluminum, so bear that in mind. Now for the next one, you're going to need a setup like this because there's no space between the firewall and the gearbox, unless of course you were going underneath the car. So you need a setup like this on a spanner. So you can see here, this is a little piece that uh, attaches a socket piece onto it and you just want to attach your 11 mil onto that, your E socket, and then you'll be able to get down the back there to unscrew it. This is on a spanner, a ratchet spanner, so it's easy just to maneuver just like that to ratchet it out. And obviously once it comes up far enough, you should be able to just turn the rest out with your hands. So you see, I'm just gonna position this right at the back here. I'm just gonna do that if I can. And then you're just gonna have to hold it on where you just remove it out of there. Obviously, you're gonna need light for this as well to be able to see when it's maneuvering out, which this is, and obviously it's not ready to come out yet by hand, which now it is. A few turns and it should just come free. And you'll be able to see there just exactly how long that bolt is. This bolt is very long compared to the other one. So if you look at this one, and then look at this one, short one goes in the front that way, and the long one comes in through the back. So do remember that. Now, what we've got to do next is take off the actual starter cable that runs to the battery to the alternator. My best advice, remove the battery cable before you even decide to remove that cable from the starter motor. Because what will happen is, if you don't remove it, it will cause a spark and I wouldn't play about with that with um, the battery being connected. Now to remove that nut off the power cable is a 13 mil. So we're just gonna remove it just like that. 
and you also want to remove this plug, which is the starter plug for the starter solenoid. So you just disconnect that. Then you take off the nut. Then your wiring should come off. Easy enough, just like that. Move that out the way. And then your starter motor should come straight out, just like that. Now you can probably see the hole that's been left. That's for the starter motor. So we're gonna go ahead and now connect the new one in. You can probably see here, this is a brand new Bosch one. Um, there was nothing wrong with my other one, so I will keep that as a spare, just in case, but this is a new Bosch starter motor. We'll just take it out of the box. And you can see the original, genuine Bosch tag over it, which we're gonna have to cut off before we fit it, but that's the new starter motor. So now we're ready to reinstall it. So we're just gonna pull it in there, just like this. Being careful not to break any wires or anything like that. It should go straight in. Align it up with all your holes that you need. Make sure it's lined. Then what you want to do is take one of the bolts and just put them in just to check. It's in alignment with the, with the hole. Put your plug, start a solenoid plug back on. Make sure that is on, because otherwise you'll be back down here trying to clip it back in. Now we are going to screw up the first bolt just to be safe so it holds it in while we connect everything. And that one's going straight in perfectly. We won't tighten them down. We just want to get them in to hold it in place so it pulls it together. And we'll do the same for the back one as well. So that's the long bolt that we took out. We'll now put that one in. And just like that now, that's the other bolt in. Obviously, it's gonna be very hard to talk that back up because of the angle it's at. The only way you could do that is obviously if you've got the gearbox removed and the engine out, you'll be able to talk that bolt up. It's not easy to talk it up, so you're just gonna to have to tighten the back bolt as tight as you can. Now we'll put the power cable back on. Just like that. Make sure everything else is out of the way. Put our nut back on. So 13 mil, that locks up to the starter motor. Make sure the metal is touching the metal bracket on the back for that cable, otherwise your car will not start. Make sure you're happy with everything, which I am. Everything's now tightened down. We'll give that last bolt underneath, tighten it down completely now. That's tight. And now once you're happy with everything down there, once you've got your starter motor reconnected, that's it done. That's the job done. On the starter motor side, that's the new starter motor connected. It really isn't hard if you have the manifold off the car. When the manifold is on, I know it can be done, but you have to jack up the car to get to that other butt back bowl, which isn't easy. Um, and then you have to fare around with underneath the manifold, disconnecting everything, which can be done, but it's very hard to do it in situ. It's a lot easier to do it like this. Once that's done, that's your new starter motor connected. You don't have to worry about that for another 100,000 miles. So that job's done. Make sure to buy a genuine manufacturer one, like a Bosch one. Because if you buy a cheaper alternative, it can fail. They do fail. Because I know there's a lot of people out there will go and buy a Chinese one to save costs. But that is going to cost you in the long run because you'll be back down here doing it again. And trust me, when you've resorted everything, put a new CCV on, done everything you want to do, to go back down there to do all that, is not a fun job to have to do it all again. So do bear that in mind, save your money and put it to a proper, genuine one. Bosch, whatever other brand there is out there, do not buy a cheap one. So you can see, just to show you clearly, the starter motor's back in. All the bolts are now back in as well. You can see the bolt just down there between the cable and everything shining there. And you've also got your other bolt at the back there, which is all on as well. Um, as I said, you're never going to get them perfectly tight. There's literally one there and one there. And once you've tightened them up, the starter motor will sit straight. You'll know if it sits straight anywhere of the seal um, because the bolts will go in and pull it in. As I said to you, that's why it's always best. Put the bolts in before you fully tighten it up to make sure all the alignment points are correct for the holes, for the bolts to go through. Do not tighten one up and then have to unloosen it to tighten the other to align it properly. Make sure you get the alignment spot on 
and you'll be okay, ready to tighten it up again. So that's it now, guys. That is the starter motor done on this BMW M52 engine. Like I said, in the next video you'll be seeing is me now putting the manifold back on. As I did say to you, I was waiting for that critical part. I've already put in one of the new CCV pipes. I've already put the new CCV on the manifold itself. The next part is actually putting it back on, reconnecting everything, getting this car back together because obviously I haven't started it since I've done the valve cover. Um, I haven't started it since I've done, done the new starter motor CCV. So we're going to test it all, make sure it all works, runs perfectly. And then that'll be this engine complete, at least for now, because majority of the work has been done. As many of you guys know, I did the oil filter housing gasket, um, everything else, the water pump, thermostat, solenoids, spark plugs. You know, I've done this Mickey Mouse flange. I've done all the belts, pulleys. Everything else has been done on this car. So there isn't much left, apart from we're going to have to change the power steering at some point. Coolant reservoir has been changed as well. Everything has been done that's needed to be done. Like I said to you guys, a lot of money is needed for these engines. And if you don't have the money, you need about a good, I would say a good 900 pounds just to be able to overhaul this engine completely, to get all these major jobs done. So if you're gonna buy one at 100K, they're all gonna need it. This is on 114K and needed every single thing. As I said, next job is putting the manifold back on. See, well, I'll show you how to connect all the hoses, how to put everything back together and we'll get that read back down so then that way we can, um, start it up but thank you very much for watching guys here's bmw dr dean here and as i said next video is putting the manifold back on thank you very much for watching and goodbye